everyone. Today we are going to be talking about the five reasons why gut bacteria need probiotics after weight loss surgery. What changes happen after you have surgery? They evaluated them before they had weight loss surgery and what they know is that Patients going into weight loss, weight loss surgery had a higher ratio of Firmicutes to Bacteroidetes. So what do those really mean? So Firmicutes are the bacteria that are known to extract more fat and calories from food and are, are known to be um, uh, more prevalent in people that are, are unhealthy or have lots of chronic diseases. Then the Bacteroidetes are the types of bacteria that are known to be in more lean and healthier people. So they know you going in after weight loss surgery, you automatically are gonna have a higher, higher level of the um, Firmicutes and not enough Bacteroidetes. What do I do to get more Bacteroidetes? If that's where I need to be, with uh, my health, if I want my health to be improved, what they found is that weight loss surgery immediately changes that ratio. So it's not that um, the Firmicutes is the, the dominant, it is the Bacteroidetes. So surgery uh, created this environment now that has set you up for success. So now the, le uh, the rest is left up to you, really. So that's where it goes into these five things. What five things are going to um, impact this ratio of the Bacteroidetes to Firmicutes? Food, stress, medication, activity, and environment. Those things can shift you back to the wrong ratio um, if you don't stay on top of it. I think we're all different. So some of you may get away with a little more stress than others, and some of you may get a little uh, get away with a poor food choices. Um, it, it just all depends on your genetic makeup. So the bottom line is um, you've got to do your due diligence. So food. So big picture really with food is you're eating whole real food. That's what your body needs to fuel off of and to feed the good guys. What they really like is lots of um, plants is what they do best with, lots of fibers. So eat real meat, um, just buy raw meat and cook it. And then veggies, lots of non-starchy veggies, cruciferous like broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, um, all that is going to be fabulous for um, the Bacteroidetes and growing and keeping them at a higher ratio. And then stress. So. None of us can control the stress we're given, but we can control how we react to it. And it is how we react is what determines how our intestines and our, our microbiome and, and the gut bacteria are changed. So if we can handle a lot of stress or we get a lot of stress, if you have the ability to turn that off, then you'll be fine. So really work on that stress management. Medication, um, you know, that's your goal most of the time anyway, is to get off as much medication as possible. So really, you know, do your due diligence and, and work hard to stay off of the medications that you know you can. Um, sometimes you can't. That's just, that's just what's happened in life and that's where you're at. And that's okay. Um, do the best you can. There are some really cool exercises that you can do that will actually boost beneficial bacteria. So like the Bacteroidetes, they would boost them. And that, um, or the, the high intensity interval training or the HIT training um, exercises is what they are. So short intervals for a short period of time, um, bursts, kind of short bursts. And you do a repetition of those for 15, 30 minutes, something like that. So nothing crazy. On the opposite side, if you do excess exercise, you are going to impact your gut bacteria in a negative way. And your body doesn't like having that um, long durations. It's about a healthy balance and that you are doing the exercise. Your body needs it, your brain needs it, um, your mood needs it, it's, it's, ne it's necessary. But 
you can't go doing it for hours and hours a day. And then your environment. This is challenging. We're exposed to so many things in the world today that you just don't have a lot of control over. So do your best, you know, don't put, you know, the junk in your body um, as much as possible. And, you know, what you're exposed to, what you breathe in and all that, just minimize as much as you can to limit um, the impact that it has on, on your gut bacteria. So those five things are drivers in how these ratios change. Because of them being able to be influenced by these five areas, um, you have to make sure that you, you know, um, do your part as best you can, but then throw in some supporters, and that's where the probiotics come in hand. Those will be your protectors so that it doesn't shift things in a, a, a long-term pattern. Those probiotics, you know, they're your defenders, they're your, they're your protectors, they're going to be there to kind of fight off um, if you want to think of it that way, fight off um, all these enemies of stress and, and you know, poor food choices, the things in the environment, um, the extra exercise that you do or the, some medications that you had to take short term, um, all that they're going to be there fighting for you um, so that you, you still keep that good ratio of the bacteroidetes to formicides. That's, that's really it. You, you, you're never going to be perfect in life, but you can kind of set yourself up that when you do have really bad days, bad weeks, bad months, you are protected and that you're doing everything you can otherwise. Ooh, ooh, ooh.